I didn't actually want to do this, but here we are. Hey, what is up guys, I'm KBHD here, and the iPhone 6S came out a couple weeks ago. You've probably already seen the reviews, it's out there. Uh, one of the biggest changes from the iPhone 6 to the new iPhone 6S is the updated specs, including the new A9 chip. So the A9 chip isn't actually manufactured by Apple. Apple is not a manufacturing company, but it's essentially designed by them and then contracted out to be built by a manufacturer and then put in the new iPhone. So this year for the iPhone 6S, there were actually two companies contracted to make the A9 chip in the new phone, TSMC and Samsung. Yes, Samsung, one of Apple's biggest enemies, builds a processor in the new iPhone. So on the outside, there's no actual way to know which one of those two guys built the A9 chip in your iPhone before you buy it. It'll just be a random selection, essentially. And there's also no official reason given why there are two manufacturers to such a major component, but it's probably volume. TSMC couldn't crank out 13 million of these chips by themselves. Samsung couldn't crank out 13 million of these chips by themselves. So Apple contracted both of them and they both make the A9 chip and they both get put into the iPhone. So the only way to know which version of the A9 chip you have in your iPhone is to check after you buy it. So there's an app called Lyrium in the App Store. It's free and I'll link it below that like button. And on the About screen, it will tell you what model of the CPU you have. In the iPhone 6S, it's the N71 MAP for the TSMC built A9 chip and the N71 AP for the Samsung built A9. And you can see there's also a difference between the chips in the 6S Plus. So here's the thing, the TSMC built A9 and the Samsung built A9 aren't exactly the same. I don't know why you'd think they would be identical, but the TSMC built A9 chip is slightly bigger than the Samsung one, coming in at 104.5 millimeters squared, while the Samsung one is a slightly smaller 96 millimeters squared. On an SOC like this, you can kind of think of chip size like sensor size on a camera, meaning bigger usually enables better performance and efficiency. The bigger chip on the TSMC A9 is built on a 16 nanometer construction as opposed to the 14 nanometer Samsung chip. So once people figured out that there could legit be one of two different sized A9 chips in your iPhone, naturally people began to test to see if there's a legit difference in performance and battery life between the two chips. Naturally, we expect the larger TSMC built chip to do better at both, and it does. So Someone found out that on the Geekbench battery test, the TSMC phone lasts up to 20 to 30% longer than the Samsung built one. Cue all the articles. I guess we got ourselves another gate. Well, it turns out the Geekbench test is essentially the worst case scenario if you're a CPU. And it's kind of hard to translate that test into real world usage. The Geekbench test is basically just maxing out the CPU at 100% and running it until the battery's dead and measuring how long that took. Real world behavior doesn't do this though. Even with a whole lot of heavy use, you're constantly cycling between a whole bunch of different performance levels, whether you're gaming or web browsing or multitasking with apps or texting or at sleep or whatever it's doing. So at full max load, the TSMC chip being a little bit bigger is definitely an advantage, but at every other performance level that's not max load, the difference is almost nothing. And that's exactly what Apple will tell you, that other tests show maybe 2-3% to difference at worst. My buddy Austin showed in his video a TSMC and Samsung iPhone running side by side, playing an hour long YouTube video. Obviously you're not maxing out power or anything, and when it was over, the TSMC chip burned 14% and the Samsung 15%. Another friend John over at TLD tried a 30 minute time lapse with both phones. At the end, the TSMC phone was at 89% and the Samsung at 84. And Ars Technica did a bunch of tests with identical iPhones, one with each chip, with the displays calibrated at the same brightness and everything, and found minimal differences across the board with battery life tests. Again, the TSMC phone did better in almost every category, thanks to the slightly bigger chip, but very slightly. And even all these are still benchmarking apps that are trying to synthetically simulate real world usage. But by the time you get your phone and install all your apps and get to using it in your mix of high performance versus low performance tasks, you probably won't even notice a difference at all. So obviously it would have been nice to have that nice big TSMC built A9 chip in every iPhone, but it's not a huge deal if you get a Samsung one like I did, if you're not maxing out your phone all the time, like the Geekbench test. What's funny is Apple's actually used multiple manufacturers for other parts in the iPhone before. They do this all the time for stuff like the RAM and the flash storage. So I guess it's not really unusual, although it is unusual for them to be different sizes and not identical. But I guess Apple's answer to all this is a loosely paraphrased, close enough. So what do you guys think? Is Chipgate a big deal to you or not? I know I'm a heavy user and yes, I had the Samsung chip in my iPhone for my review and I was happy with the battery life. So it wasn't a big deal to me, 
But I, I feel like if we need to start another gate, which do we really? But if we do, it should be about something that's actually terrible, like the way this mouse charges. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this one. Feel free to share this video with anyone who you think might be interested in this whole iPhone chip gate thing. And if you hit that subscribe button below, you'll be among the first to see new videos like this when they come out. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.